He is just good. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let heaven and earth Proclaim, kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name, Jesus, 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 there's just Something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like fragrance after the rain, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim to toot. Kings and kingdoms may all pass away. But there's something about that name. Jim Stevens, make your way here. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's something about that name. Master. Savior Jesus, like fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Janet Stevens said to me this morning, Amen. Janet Stevens said this morning that she has just got to say something about the Lord, so we're going to let her do just that right now. Take your time. Hold, hold it close to your mouth.
Jesus. Master, Savior Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Let heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. When he reaches out his hand, Bill will cease at his command. Winds and waves obey his will. When he says to them, be still. What man is this they hold did say that the winds and seas obey? He's the one who sells to me. Oh, yes, he's the master of the sea. When he reaches out his hand, rain stops at his command. Winds and waves obey his will. When he says to them, be still. What man is this they all did say? That the winds and seas obey. He's the one who sails with me. Oh, yes, he's the master of the sea. He's the one who sails with me. Oh, yes, he's the master of the sea. Praise the Lord. Oh, he's the master of your sea today. I will serve thee because I love thee, dear. Have given life to me. I was nothing before you found me you have given life to me heartaches broken pieces and ruined life or why you died on Calvary. Your touch is what I long for. You have given life to me. Heartaches, broken pieces, and ruined lives are why you 
thine own Calvary. Your touch is what I long for. You have given life to me. Yes, you have given life to me. Man, praise the Lord for His presence this morning. Just so thankful for just sensing Him and feeling Him already here today. And just trusting that He's going to speak to each and every one of us in, in a special way today that um, it will be indicting to us and it will be It'll, it'll be life-changing to each and every one of us. I have, um, in the last, as you know, the last two Sundays, we've been in the book of Nehemiah. We're going to be there again today. If you want to start turning or clicking there, we will be in the book of Nehemiah again today. But I just sense, and I shared with you last week that uh, what my heart was in the the things that God has on my heart about us. And I, that hasn't changed. I believe that God is, is working very diligently and very hard right now to get the attention of the church and to get our attention and to cause us to stop and to pause and to think hard and to take inventory <clears throat> about ourselves and about our lives and the things that we're doing and how we're living so that the church will be what it was intended to be and it will be a lighthouse, it will be a beacon, it will be a place that people will want to come to hear about the Lord, to learn about Him, to grow in Him. I just believe that God is working very diligently on the church right now. And I hope that you see the same. I hope that you sense the same. I hope that you feel the same as well. And one of the reasons I believe that, as I poured out my heart to you last week and today, the one of the reasons that um, I believe that God has had me zeroed in in the book of Nehemiah and I'm just depending upon him and trusting him that when he's done with this, done with me, done with you, that we ourselves too will have our eyes opened and we will see and understand things in a new or different light as well. You probably noticed this morning that Brother Vic is not up here with me uh, and I, I would simply ask you guys to just please lift uh, Vic and Linda up in prayer this morning. Sister Linda, she's had a rough night. She spent some time at the hospital as well. Uh, but she is home uh, battling some kidney stones this morning. So Vic, who has been an absolute trooper for these 17 Sundays, um, Vic was right here this morning helping to set up. But the moment that we were finished, he went back home to care for Linda. And uh, so I would ask you guys just to lift up Sister Linda. Sister Vic as well. And there's a lot of prayer requests that's going on. Sister Janet, thank you for, for minding the Lord and being obedient here this morning. And, and we did the same thing as well. We were just minding the Lord and being obedient. We're going to do that here today. The book of Nehemiah, chapter number 8 this morning. I'll ask you to pray for me. I'll ask you to pray that God will just speak through me. But he'll also speak to me as well. And that God will reveal himself again in a new and fresh way uh, here this morning. I've, I've made some notes, which um, I don't always do anymore, but I've made some notes so that I don't mess up the things that uh, God was impressing upon me prior to today. Nehemiah chapter number 8, and we're going to read several verses here this morning uh, out, of, out of God's Word. 
Nehemiah captures it this way. It says this, all the people, verse number 1, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse number 1, and all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. They spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding, upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday before the men and the women and those that can understand. Semicolon. New school of thought right here. Going along with it. And it says this. And the ears of all the people <laughs> were attentive unto the book of the law. Verse number five. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And you'll read in verse number four that he was standing on a pulpit of wood. He was above all the people. He could be seen uh, better, if you will, in that regard. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Verse six, and Ezra blessed the Lord and the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen. With lifting up their hands, they bowed their heads and they worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground behind you guys. Verse number eight. So they read in the book the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Verse nine in Nehemiah, which is the Tershatha. And Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God, mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Verse 10, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send the portions unto them. For whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy unto the, our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let me give you some backdrop here, just as a recap of sorts. For the last two Sundays, we've understood that Nehemiah has a job to do. He works in Shushan, the palace, he works for the king. He's the king's cupbearer, but he learns about Jerusalem, the homeland. It's in tatters. It's torn down. It's, it's not in a good state. The people there are not in a good state either. He suddenly feels compelled. He feels a calling that to go back to the homeland, to Jerusalem, to rebuild the walls. And in doing so, he is in sense going back to create and rebuild what was once normal to them. He has to have some help. He prays. He asks God for help. Help for release of leave of absence with his job that he has to do. Now they're under Babylonian rule. They're in, they're in bondage and captivity. He needs release from the job that he's doing. And he needs help from the king. He needs a blessing from the king to go back to get supplies and resources to go back to work and to rebuild uh, this, this wall. And he goes back and he develops a plan and he gets back to work he has all of the things that's given to him but resistance and challenges are going to come they're going to come through a couple of people Sambalot and Tobiah they're going to come they're going to rally their cronies their troops to try to seize against or to try to to halt the work that's going to happen there and so we've, we've taken that and God has impressed upon us that we today, right now, with what's going on in our land, we're here six, 17 Sundays in a row, but we'd like to be back inside of the church building. We want to be back there. We want to get back to a sense of no normalcy. There's a lot of resistance that's going on. Comparing this to today, what Nehemiah had gone through, there's a lot of resistance that we're facing in our land. He was facing resistance there. 
But when God gives you a calling, when God gives you a direction, when God gives you clearance, when God gives you His, His blessing to go do and work for Him, the obstacles, the hindrances, the things that are going to be coming up against you, He's going to bring them to naught. He's going to render them powerless. He's going to render them useless. He is going to shine. He is going to be seen. He is going to be heard so long as we are at work for Him. And that's exactly what happened with Nehemiah. And that's exactly what's happening with us right now. Today, seeing it in this parking lot, 17 Sundays in a row, at 1.30 this morning, it was raining to beat the band. Sister Janet said this, and this is true, that if you have faith the size, the grain of a mustard seed, that you can move mountains, you can call things into existence. As of yesterday when, and last night when I went to bed, I weren't even thinking or concerned about rain falling on this place. I knew that God was going to show up and deliver. And he's done just that. We get back. We look back at what's going on with Nehemiah. They want to back, get back to a sense of normalcy. Troubles, trials, tribulations, resistance is going to come. But when we stay focused to the work, when we get to work, when we trust God, He delivers, He shines through. So we just have to stay the course. But for us today, let me give you a little more backdrop since last Sunday in the book of Nehemiah. We were in chapter 4 last week. Let me help you get you caught up with what's going on to chapter number 8 as well. Y'all go back and read this for yourself. It'll bless you. But you'll find over there uh, between verses 5, 6, and 7, you'll find several things. You'll find that they had to make, they being the people, they had to make some changes to their behaviors they had to make some changes to the way that they conducted themselves. One in particular in those three chapters was how they conducted their financial affairs. You will find as well that resistance was still going to come from Sambalot and Tobiah and some others. Didn't make no difference. They, they wanted more than anything else to put a stop to what they were doing. Making stories up about them. You'll find that that happened too. And you're also going to find that the people that had been exiled, they've come back home. Now in Nehemiah, it's over 42,000 people that have come back. The exiles have returned. I've thought in my mind what the first Sunday is going to be like inside the walls of West Fairfield Baptist Church. I've thought about what that day is going to be like. How it's going to be when we get to reassemble there. When God says that we can go, guess what, folks? We're going. So when God says it, we'll go. Until He says it, we're going to be right here. But I've thought about that day, how it's going to be. And it brings us up to chapter Number eight, and I want us to look at just a couple of things. I've had to give a lot of backdrop. I want us to look particularly at two verses. I hope you still have your Bibles open or your uh, tablets or smartphones open so that you can see these. I want us to look at two things. And the people, verse number one, and the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. They spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And verse number 8. So they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly. Gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. The B-I-B-L-E. 
Yeah, that's the book for me. Stand alone on the Word of God, the B I B L E. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, God, for being here with us today. We know, God, that you truly do control the winds and the waves and the rains and the clouds and the sun. You're in charge of it all. So, Father, you have once again blessed and ordained our gathering here today. Father, I pray that you will speak to me today. I pray, God, that you speak through me today. I pray, God, that you do not let me as man speak out of my own heart or my own words, but instead, God, that you speak through me that I'm nothing but a vessel for you. For, Father, if I try to do this on my own, I'm going to mess it up and I'm going to hinder you, and I don't want to do that. So, Father, speak today. Let Jesus be seen. Let you be seen. Let your heart be understood. Let us know you more intently, more deeply, more powerfully today. I pray, God, Father, may we have a deeper appreciation for you. And may we have a deeper indictment about how to conduct and live our lives, God, I pray. God, speak to us. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. A truck driver one time had been driving for other companies. He had been under the direction and under the control of the other companies. The routes, the runs, the things that this truck driver had to do was at the direction of or the instruction of someone else. And he thought to himself, I want to do it my way. I want to have my own truck. I want to be in charge of my own schedule. I want to be in charge of my on delivery routes and the things that I do. And so he purchased the truck, purchased a trailer, and did all of those things, controlled the schedule, controlled the route. Several months later, was not happy with the decision that had been made, and it said, I, I wish that I had never left the previous job wish that I had never gone away from the previous job that I had I had to work very diligently and very hard to sell the thing that he had bought himself into sell the truck sell the trailer everything else so that he could go back y'all heard this phrase before I never knew what I had until it was gone. I never knew, I never knew what that was until it was taken away. I never knew how much that meant to me until I didn't have it anymore. We look at those two verses in the book of Nehemiah and what you find here is after some time of them being in exile, after some time of them being away from the from, from what was once normal, from one time of, of them being in a, in a life that, that they once appreciated, now they've been taken away from that. Now they don't have that anymore. And so they've had, when they've gone back, they've rebuilt the walls, and they've all now assembled. And the first thing that they want to do is they want to hear the Word of God. And so they've asked Ezra, they've asked Nehemiah, they've asked them to get the Word, get the Bible, get, get God's Word. And in that day it was the law. Get it and bring it out and read it to us. Tell us about it. Let us hear this again. And not only did they want to hear this, not only did they want to hear the Word, but when they opened it and when they began to read it, it said that they all stood up. And it said that they all wept. Let me tell you guys something. God's word is powerful. God's word is nothing in comparison 
There's nothing in comparison in this world that's as powerful as God's Word. Even His Word says that His Word is powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. And when these people were hearing God's Word, they stood up, they said amen, they lifted their arms, they praised the Lord, and they wept over God's Word. Let me tell you folks something. Even Jesus, the, John captured Jesus as saying this when Jesus was talking to His Father. He said this to His Father. Jesus said, Your Word is truth. David, the psalmist, he said this in Psalms 119. By the way, it's the longest chapter in God's Word. It's 176 verses long. It nearly every verse speaks about the Word of God. Isn't that something else right there? But David, the psalmist, said this in Psalms 119 in verse 11. He said, Your Word, Thy Word, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. He goes on later in verse number 105 in that same chapter. He said, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and it's a light unto my path. Matthew quotes Jesus as saying this when he was, when he was talking to Satan, the tempter, as Scripture calls him there. When Satan said, You command these stones to be made bread, Jesus responds, and he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We look a little deeper at ourselves. I'm going to ask you today, your first question of the day is this. How precious is God's word to you? How much does God's word mean to you? When we think about, I didn't know what I had until it was gone. I didn't know what I would miss until I couldn't do it anymore. I didn't know how precious that was to me. Here we are, we're 17 Sundays here, yes. But we were also a few Sundays before that, before we could even be here. It's been since March 15th since we've been inside a church structure. I hope more than anything else, we all come to understand that the church is not a building. The church is the people. And when we assemble and when we call upon God, when we worship Him, He inhabits the praises of His people. We're here today as a, as a body. We're assembled. This is the church. We're just looking to get to a place that we can reconvene. That's all that that is. We don't get up and go to church on Sunday mornings. Instead, the church gets up and assembles on Sunday morning. Amen? I didn't know how much I'd miss being inside of a building. But I do miss it. If I want to get back to that sense of normalcy, if I want to get back there, I've got work to do in my own life. You do too, church. We want to get back to the sense of normalcy. You know what? We've got some things that we need to do. We've got to think about ourselves. We've got to know that resistance is going to come. And it's going to come at, at us. The devil, the enemy, he's going to do what he can to bring us resistance and harm and challenges along those ways as well. But when we get anchored and when we get focused and when we get locked in. And when God's Word is the foundation upon what we do, I'm here to tell you nothing is going to stand in our way. Those storms may come, He's going to render them useless. Those challenges may come, He's going to render those powerless. And we're going to be able to assemble. So how precious, how precious is it for us to get back to a sense of normalcy. How precious is it to us to be anchored in, to stand on God's Word? Matthew captured and said this when Jesus was quoting the Beatitudes. He said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And James says this, about the word. 
He said that we are to be doers of the word and not hearers only. We look at our scripture here today. Look at what happened, folks. Look at what was going on with the people that was there. Look at what they wanted to do. Look at what they wanted to hear. Look at what they wanted to have happen. In verse number one, it says, And the people gathered themselves together as one man, and as one man, into the street that was before the water gate, and they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, as the Lord had commanded Israel. And so they did just that. And in verse number eight, they read the, in the book of the law of God distinctly, and they gave the sense. And they, excuse me, and they gave the sense and they caused them to understand the reading. That simply means that they explained the Word of God. I've given you several verses that God had impressed upon me about His Word, that we are to be doers of the Word and not hearers only. We've got work to do. So listen, if we want to get back to a sense of normalcy, just like they did, We've got work to do. We've got to have that unction. We've got to have that calling. We've got to have that drive. We've got to have that direction. We've got to have that in our heart and in our spirit. We've got to do that. We've got to be willing to stand and guard against the enemy at the gate. We've got to stand against them. We've got to let them not come against us. No matter what they're going to throw at us, we've got to be able to stand and guard against that and not let that bring us down but let us stand up taller for him we've got to take inventory of ourselves I asked you this morning how precious is the word of God to you how precious is it I'm going to tell you this there's not man and there's not demon that's going to tell me what to preach what not to preach. God will tell me and I will follow His direction. No matter what somebody else says, I don't like that, Brother Mark. I don't like that, what you had to say. I don't like you getting on my toes. I'm not aiming for you. I'm aiming to please Him. I'm aiming to have Him proud of me. And if it makes every imp in hell mad, then I'm okay with that. And if it makes every demon that's around me upset and angry, I'm okay with that too. I want to please Him. The only way that I can do that is to spend time with Him, to listen to Him, to study about Him, to be drawn closer to Him. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And you have to do that too, church. Blessed are they when they hunger. And they thirst after righteousness. I'm hungry for Him. I thirst for Him. I hope you do too. God's trying to talk to the church today. He's trying to say to the church today that you need to wake up. Have we drifted away from Him? Have we gotten so caught up in our programs and in our assembly that we're not anchored into His Word, the one thing that became evident to them in the book of Nehemiah, the one thing that became powerful is in chapter number 8. And that was all about the Word of God. Oh sure, there was other things that was powerful not to diminish those and not to undermine them. That's not my intention. But you look at this. When God's Word is spoken, when God's Word is delivered. That's a powerful thing. And it has. It has big effects. The Israelites. They had to make some changes about themselves. They wanted to get back to normal. They wanted to get back to the homeland. They rebuilt the wall. That was their first step. But they had some things that they had to do. They had to make changes in their financial affairs. You'll read that. If you'll go read this book. You'll find that. They had to make some changes in their financial affairs. They had to make some heart changes about uh, what, they were, what they were doing. They had to stay focused to the work of God. They had to humble themselves. You will find that. 
They had to make some changes, you know, just their personal affairs, some other things that was out there. But the one thing that was important, the one thing that they needed to do is they had to get focused and they had to get re returned, rededicated. They had to get refocused to God's Word. And that was a big change too. And it had big effects as well. They wanted to get back to normal. Resistance came. And even though when we go, when we when we face that resistance, when we want to return, when we want to get back to that sense of normalcy, even when we change our ways, you're going to make the devil mad. You're going to make him angry with you. He's going to have to call an emergency board meeting with every imp and every demon that's in, in and around you. He's going to have to talk hard. He's going to have to go to work hard. When you decide, when you want to make a change in your life for God, that's exactly what's going to happen Resistance and challenges are still going to come and they're going to come harder at you then. So even though when we make that refocus and we make that change, resistance and challenges are still going to come. They're going to come internally. They're going to come externally. False things and accusations might be said about you. You'll find that in the book of Nehemiah too. But stay the course. Stay the course. Don't give up. Don't back down. God will bless it, and He will bless you. Guard against the enemy. You'll find that in chapter 7, by the way. Guard against the enemy. Be distinct from the world. Don't disrespect God. Don't disrespect His house. And more than anything else, tune your heart, your mind, your affections, and your intentions. You tune your mind, your heart, your affections, your intentions to God, His Word, and knowing Him better. And I promise you, you will see amazing things happen. If you want to get back to a sense of normal, if you want to get back to the thing that you didn't realize how bad you'd miss it until you had lost it, if you want to get back to the way things once were, it's up to us, it's up to you. We've got to, we've got to do this spiritual inventory of ourselves We've got to make some, some changes. They might be painful, but they're going to be good in the long run. We've got to get back to that. We've got to do those things if we want to get back there. And when we do get that back to that place, it's going to be a powerful, special day. And when we're anchored in God's Word, my goodness, there ain't an imp in hell that can come against us at that point. So how about you today? Do you want to get back? Or do you just want to keep going through the motions? Are you willing to make changes? Are you willing to take that inventory of yourself? And does God's word, does it have its place? Is it first and foremost? Is God first and foremost as well? What does he mean to you this morning? Bow your heads where you are, everybody. Bow your heads. I desire your prayers, church. sense a calling from God that you've got some work to do right now. That in order for us to get back where we once were, it's going to take you. It's going to take you. To make some adjustments, to make some change, or to surrender yourself to Him. Put your arms out those windows and raise them high. <laughs> I see them. All that we would all have 
a calling and a desire. <laughs> Woo. That if we want to get back to God's house, we want to be at work for Him. Yeah. It's going to take us. It's going to take the surrender. It's going to take a change. I hope you've been respectful of one another and I trust that you have, but I want to tell you, church, friend, arms have been out everywhere. So, I see those, I see those hands, I see those raised. I saw them under the different circumstances. And if you want me to pray with you directly, when this service ends, don't leave and we'll gather. And we'll pray as well. Jesus, 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 there's something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 that hath been endured, broken Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you and I thank you, God. For moving through this service today. Father, I pray, I pray, God, that all of us will have a burning desire buried deep within us right now, God. Just as your people were in that day, God, that over your word and over what was contained within it, God, that over your word, that it was so powerful, that it had such an effect. Father, may, may we get to that point as well. God, may we recognize how powerful your word is and the effect that it can have. And God, what is so needed right now for your people is for us to be anchored and rooted and grounded in your word. Father, there's things in our lives oftentimes that we have to, we have to part ways with. We have to separate ourselves from God. Because it's contrary to you. Or it may not be the best thing for us to be part of at that, at that particular moment. No matter what it is, God. There's things in our life, God, that you're calling us, you're urging us to do. So Father, I pray that we, we do just that. Father, as much as we want to get back to where we can assemble as a body inside a structure and inside a facility. God, it's not near as important as an individual choice and as an individual relationship that we have with you, God. If that's not being, being assembled inside there is not near as important as eternity. So Father, I pray that you will cause us this day that you will cause us to have a greater appreciation not only for your house, God, but for your word and for living for you and for living a life that's pleasing to you. And God, that we truly do surrender ourselves to your calling and to your work. Because, Father, 
right now this world needs to see you and they need to see a God that is that is alive and is alive in us they need to see you through the example that we live so father give us a fresh anointing give us a fresh walk give us a fresh calling today I pray and father for those that have raised their hands here today God that are that that, that need prayer father I give them to you I lift them up to you, God. I ask, God, that whatever the needs, the circumstances, the things are that's in their life, Father, I pray that you meet them, that you grant them. And Father, more than anything else, that you are glorified through it. Father, for those that have raised their hand here today, that are in need of a closer relationship with you, Father, I pray right now that you, you work that, that you work that with them right now. Help them to call upon you, talk to you like they're talking to a friend because you are the greatest friend that we could ever have. We love you. Father, we thank you for this day. Make sense of this all to us today, God. Give us a drive and a desire to live a life that's pleasing to you. We ask this in Jesus' name, and everybody said and honked, amen. And amen and amen. Thank you all for being